From vampire slayers to time travelers to ancient Greek warrior women, the 90s was bursting with fantasy and sci-fi television. So cozy up in a nice flannel and turn that nirvana down. It's time to talk about the top 10 geeky shows from the 1990s. Number 10, Eerie Indiana. Let's get started with a show that features a group of teenagers who live in a small Indiana town where strange supernatural things are going on that the adults are not aware of. Wait. Did I just describe Stranger Things? Airing from 91 to 93, Eerie Indiana never seems to get enough credit. Sure, the production quality wasn't great, but the scripts were ambitious and fairly insane at times. Joe Dante of Gremlins fame was heavily involved and you can feel the 80s vibe flowing through it. At the time, USA Today called Eerie Indiana Stephen King by way of The Simpsons. And honestly, I think they were pretty close to the mark. Overall, it was a love note to classic horror and sci-fi films, and I think it's still enjoyable for anyone, despite being a kid's show. Number 9, Sliders. What would the world be like if America had lost the Revolutionary War? Or if penicillin had never been invented? What if dinosaurs never died out? These what-ifs were the kinds of themes that Sliders, which aired from 95 to 2000, loved to explore. Taking on the multiverse before it was trendy, Sliders was about a group of people trapped in parallel universes, sliding from one to another, trying to get back home. It starred Jerry O'Connell, who you may recognize from the talk, but probably not from Stand By Me, and John Rhys Davies, who you certainly recognize from Lord of the Rings and Indiana Jones. The first few seasons of the show were pretty great. Unfortunately, it took a nosedive after season three, and by the end of the run, most of the original cast was gone. But despite not sticking the landing, Sliders still deserves its place as one of the great geeky 90s shows. Number 8, Quantum Leap. What do you get if you combine Sliders with Highway to Heaven? You get Quantum Leap, that's what, which aired from 1989 to 93. It starred Scott Bakula as Sam Beckett, a genius scientist with a black belt in martial arts who is researching time travel and accidentally gets trapped in history. But this time machine puts Beckett in the bodies and in control of random people, you know, exorcist style. He must right some kind of wrong or prevent some kind of disaster before he can leap again. Hopefully this time back home, but usually into another person with another problem. The show had a ton of heart and great charisma between Bakula and the amazing Dean Stockwell. It's a fun, easy watch that usually tugs your heartstrings and leaves your spirits uplifted. Number seven, The Adventures of Briscoe County Jr. After Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade cleaned up at the box office in 1989, Fox decided they wanted their own swashbuckling hero chasing down a magical artifact. Enter Briscoe County Jr., played by the always groovy Bruce Campbell. In the show, Briscoe County Jr. is the son of a murdered U.S. Marshal, and he's on the hunt for John Bly's gang, the outlaws who are responsible. But Bly, played by the incredible Billy Drago, is obsessed with finding the orb, an otherworldly artifact that grants supernatural powers. Airing from 93 to 94, the show had an unfortunately short run, and it's a real shame because it had tons of potential. It feels like a classic network television format failure, a concept that would have been a solid modern day 10 to 12 episode season stretched out to 27 episodes to fit the standard network format. By the end of season one, viewership had dropped significantly and Fox decided to let Briscoe ride off into the sunset. Number six, Xena Warrior Princess. Before New Zealand was known as Middle Earth, it served as ancient Greece for the shows Hercules, The Legendary Journeys, and Xena, Warrior Princess. Co-created by Sam Raimi of Evil Dead and Spider-Man fame, Xena, played by the ridiculously talented Lucy Lawless, began as a guest character on Hercules before getting her own spin-off, and then surpassing her origin show by every measure of success. Sorry, Sorbo. Xena was stuffed with fun characters, some based on gods or historical figures. She battled Ares, Mephistopheles, Morpheus, and others. The show aired from 95 to 2001, and I really can't recommend it enough. It's a high mark of 90s fantasy television. You can skip Hercules though. Xena appears in three episodes from season one that are worth watching to set the stage, but otherwise you can just focus on the warrior princess. Number five, Star Trek Deep Space Nine. 
Star Trek's fourth series aired from 93 to 97, lasting seven seasons, though not without a number of adjustments and tweaks. Oh hi, Worf! Deep Space Nine was the first Star Trek show developed without the direct involvement of creator Gene Roddenberry. It takes place in a space station, Deep Space Nine, positioned near a stable wormhole that spits out all sorts of crazy from the unexplored Gamma Quadrant. But it's really the last three seasons of DS9 where it made the biggest impact to Star Trek as a franchise. The conflict between the Federation and the invading Dominion is some of the best Trek ever made, hands down. But if you're not a Trekkie, that's okay. As long as you have a passing familiarity with Star Trek, you'll be just fine jumping right into Deep Space Nine. Number four, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Hey, what's that punk rock guitar pick slide? Oh, it's everyone's favorite theme song introducing everyone's favorite monster killer. Buffy the Vampire Slayer aired from 97 to 2001 and attracted a massive, dedicated following. Somehow Buffy managed to become a phenomenally successful television series after a false start on the silver screen. I would call it the fastest franchise reboot ever, but I think that honor technically belongs to our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. But anyway, it turns out that smashing together Beverly Hills 90210 and Scooby-Doo was a genius idea. Sarah Michelle Gellar shines as Buffy Summers, and the rest of the main cast are all electric on screen. Fantastic writing, chemistry, and makeup effects took Buffy to the next level. Of course, since we're dealing with teenagers here, not every episode is entirely focused on neutralizing supernatural threats. There's also plenty of romantic tension, school drama, and parents just not understanding. Number three, Twin Peaks. David Lynch's first stab at a TV series came after his biggest success, The Elephant Man, and his biggest disaster, Dune. And if you're familiar with David Lynch's work, you won't be surprised to hear that critics weren't quite sure what to make of Twin Peaks when it debuted in 1990. Just to clarify how original this show was compared to what came before it, Time Magazine described it as a dash of Columbo and a jot of Knott's Landing. Clearly this kind of television had never been seen before. But perhaps Lynch's most genius move was working with Mark Frost, who was a veteran writer on Hill Street Blues, a popular police procedural and drama from the 80s. I think it grounded Lynch's approach and helped audiences relate better to the bizarre characters surrounding the show. Season one of Twin Peaks was nearly perfect at eight episodes. Season two, however, suffered from the network format that killed Briscoe County Jr., expanding the show to 22 episodes and turning it into a painful slog. That was enough to kill viewership and cancel the show. David Lynch not being as involved for season two didn't help either. But Lynch wasn't content with letting Twin Peaks fade away. 25 years later, he created a revival season that took the show to an entirely new level. It's worth slogging through the subpar season two just to be able to experience the third and presumably final season. Number two, Freaks and Geeks. What's this teen dramedy doing in a geeky sci-fi show list? Well, friends, sometimes you celebrate the genre and sometimes you celebrate the culture around the genre. Freaks and Geeks, in my humble opinion, is the best depiction of being a nerdy kid in the 80s, beyond any other movie or television show that came after. The show focused on two siblings, Sam and Lindsay Weir, and their misunderstood friend groups, the younger geeks and the older burnout freaks. Running only one season before cancellation, this show launched the careers of so many fantastic actors, including Seth Rogen, Linda Cardellini, Jason Segel, Martin Starr, Busy Phillips, and more. Even little Sam Weir went on to great success as a writer for the MCU Spider-Man movies, as well as the fantastic Dungeons and Dragons movie from 2022. Freaks and Geeks treated every character like a three-dimensional person. They all felt like people you knew from high school. It's such an honest depiction of teenage life in that area, and I don't think it's been replicated since. Number one, The X-Files. Okay, I can't lie about this number one pick. I'm biased, like incredibly biased. To me, The X-Files was more than just an incredible sci-fi show. It was a revolution of cinematic television and it set a new standard for sci-fi shows going forward. Like Twin Peaks, the influence of The X-Files cannot be overstated. 
But the biggest reason I put The X-Files first on this list is because I think it encapsulates the 90s better than any other show here, with Buffy as a close runner-up. The X-Files existed right inside the 90s prime. They tackled computer hackers, virtual reality, cybernetics, and so much other emerging technology from the 90s. We have to mention the chemistry between David Duchovny and Gillian Anderson, setting a new high mark for television. If you ask me to name the most iconic on-screen duo of all time, I would say Mulder and Scully without hesitation. It's true that the X-Files had some rough episodes. Hello again, old network television format, especially in the beginning and the end. And I know the revival was a mess, but when the show was firing on all cylinders, especially between seasons three and six, it was magical. So that's it. Our favorite geeky shows from the 90s. What do you think? Did we miss one of your favorites? Leave us a comment and be sure to like and subscribe for more videos just like this.